This is the Math 2 Unit 4 practice test coincides to Chapter 4 from our book. So in the first question, we have DE is the mid-segment of ABC. We need to find the value of X. So I'm going to take these two values and use them to solve. What I'm not going to do is set them equal. DE, the mid-segment, is half the length of the side, or we double this mid-segment to get it to match. So I'm going to do 2 times X plus 5 equals 3x minus 1. So that gives me 2x plus 10 equals 3x minus 1. Subtract 2x from both sides. And if I add over 1, I get 11. So my answer here is x equals 11. I should check to make sure it works. DE, 11 plus 5 is 16. CB, plug that in, I get 3 times 11 is 33, minus 1 is 32. And it works DE as half CB. Now for number two, DE is the mid-segment. I have that AD is 15, AE is 14, I need to find AB. Well, since I have a mid-segment here, E is the midpoint, which means if this is 14, that's 14 as well, so AB is 28. For number three, we need to figure out what could not be the three sides, or what could be the three sides of a triangle. Our rule here is that the longest side has to be less than the sum of the other two. So in our first one, we get 15 less than 8 plus 5. Well, that tells us 15 is less than 13. That is false, so this does not make a triangle. The second one, I get 20 is less than 10 plus 12, which tells me that 20 is less than 22. That works. That can make a triangle. If we keep going, we get 25 is less than 15 plus 10 which is 25 is less than 25, that's not true. They're actually equal to each other. And then the last one, 18 is less than 2 plus 15 is 18 is less than 17. That is false, so B is our best answer. Now for number four, we need to list the order from shortest to longest side. First thing I'm going to do is list the um, order of the angles. So C is the smallest angle, A is next, B is the largest. So now when I look at the opposites to like C, it's the side that does not intersect it. It's also the letters that it doesn't use. So C is opposite AB. A is opposite BC, the other two letters, which means B is opposite AC. So our order from shortest to longest is AB, BC, AC. For number five, we have the lengths of two sides of a triangle. We need our possible third sides. I'm going to do 41 minus 23 and 41 plus 23. That's going to give me the range that I could use for the values. 41 minus 23 gives me 18. 41 plus 23 gives me 64. So these two values need to be the range that I have with the third side falling somewhere between them. So we should write between 18 and 64. What you also have to be careful with here, this is any value between them that is not including 18 and 64. 18 and 64 don't work. That would fail that test we did up here. Um, but don't say like 19 and 63 because it's every possible value. Even decimals very close to 18 and slightly larger would work. For number six, we need to match the correct description. A From a midpoint to an opposite vertex is a median, so that would be A. Bisect an angle would be an angle bisector, B. Perpendicular to a side and goes to the opposite vertex would be an altitude, C, which leaves us with a perpendicular line through the midpoint is a perpendicular bisector. So then we match the points of concurrency. A perpendicular bisector, those three meet at a circumcenter. An angle bisector meets at a in-center, a median meets at a centroid, and an altitude meets at the orthocenter. For number eight, we need to figure out which figure is the shortest. I'm going to find the smallest side in each triangle and narrow that down. So I have XZ is the smallest in this triangle because it's opposite the 50. I have ZY is the smallest in this triangle because it's opposite the 42. Now these are my two candidates. I have this, tri this side and this side. They both happen to be in the same triangle, so now they can go head to head. XZ over here is opposite 45. 
zy is opposite to 42, and it turns out that zy is shorter because it's opposite the smaller angle. For number 10, uh, they are an angle bisector I'm looking at. I'm going to set these two equal. It's like looking at congruent triangles with corresponding parts. So I solve, subtract 3x, I get 2x on that side. Add 3 over, I get 2x equals 4, so x is 2, but we stop because we're actually looking for the, the side. I plug 2 into AD. 3 times 2 plus 1 gives me 7, so the length of AD is 7. We could check real quick. 2 times 5 is 10 minus 7, 3 is 7, so that, that does match. It should. For 11, we're looking for DEF, the whole angle. First, we've got to set those two parts equal. 3y plus 4 equals 5y minus 10. If I subtract 3y from both sides, I then add over the 10, so I get y equals 7. Now I'm going to plug that into each angle. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4 is 25. 7 times 5 is 35, minus 10 is 25. They're both 25, which they should be. Now I total those together to get the measure of DEF to be 50 degrees. For number 12, we need to find XZ. XZ is a mid-segment. It is parallel to the 18, this side down here, NO. So it is half the length because the mid-segment is half the length but the parallel side. So we're just going to put 9. Now if XY is 10, we need to find what MO is. Now that's going in the opposite direction. MO would be double that. It would be 20. Last year, we have angle M is 64. We need to find XYZ which is right here. And what we can use for that is the fact that we really have triangles here. This segment MN is, has a midpoint. These two parts are congruent. This part is also congruent because it's half of the length. If I put a midpoint markings here, I'd also have the double markings there. And now I have two congruent triangles between these two. So 64 is corresponding, so we'd say angle uh, measure of angle XYZ is also 64 degrees. For number 13, I'm going to set these two equal to each other. 3X minus 2 equals 2X plus 4. Subtract 2X from both sides. Add 2 and I get X equals 6, but they want me to find AB. So we'll say that AB is equal to 3 times 6 minus 2, or 18 minus 2, which is 16. For 14, and you find the value of x, those are angle bisectors, so 7x plus 3 equals 10x minus 9. Subtract 7x, add 9 over, and I get x equals 4. 16, which is the smallest angle? The smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, so we would say angle M or angle NMO would be the same thing, just using three letters. For 17, the order of the sides from shortest to longest. Our shortest side is opposite the 59, so that's DE. Next is the 60, that's DF it is opposite to. And finally, the 61, and we have EF. For number 18, two sides of a triangle are 5 and 10. What is the range of possible lengths for the third side? We're going to go 10 minus 5 and 10 plus 5. So we get 5 and 15 with our third side being between those, so we'll write between 5 and 15. Again, not including 5 and 15 though, as we solve that. Now for 19, I'm going to fix my axis here. We have uh, 0, negative 5. We have negative 4, negative 1, and negative 2, 3. So this gives us our triangle. We have A, B, C. So we need to first find the midpoints for each of them. So the midpoint D for AC, I'm going to put their coordinates just there so I can see them easier. 
Now to find the midpoint of, let's start with AC. That's going to be D. I'm going to add the x's, divide by 2, add the y's, divide by 2 within these two points. So that's going to be negative 2 plus negative 4 over 2 and 3 plus negative 1 over 2. So this becomes negative 6 over 2 and 2 over 2 or negative 3, 1 which if we check is that point D right here. It's halfway between the two. If I went down four to the left, I do half, down two, one to the left. So that's D. Uh, let's look at uh, E is going to be between C and B, these two points. So I'm going to do negative four plus zero over two, negative one plus negative five over two. This gives me negative four over two and negative six over two. So that's a negative 2, negative 3. We check that. Negative 2, negative 3 is our point E. Finally, we have F, which is the midpoint of A and B. So we're going to go negative 2 plus 0 over 2 and 3 plus negative 5 over 2. Negative 2 over 2, negative 2 over 2. It looks like we have negative 1, negative 1, which is our point here for F. So when I draw in my mid-segments, it says I need to show, show using slopes that each mid-segment is parallel to a side. So we should have that AB is parallel to DE. So our slope of AB, if we look at AB, it goes down 8, 2 to the right. So that would be negative 8 over 2 or negative 4. Our slope of DE goes down 4, 1 to the right, so that's negative 4 as well. That confirms they're parallel. If we look at CA parallel to EF, the slope of CA goes up 4, 2 to the right, so that's 4 over 2, which would be a slope of 2. Our slope of EF is it goes up 2, 1 to the right, so that would be a slope of 2. That one checks out. The last one we have is BC parallel to DF. We go slope of BC first. We go down 4, 4 to the right. Gives me a slope of negative 1. DF, we go down 2, 2 to the right. Also a slope of negative 1, so we see that our slopes are in fact um, equal, so they are parallel lines.